Advance and be recognized, everyone. Give the countersign and welcome to another episode of the Sit Rep Podcast, your forward operation space for all things military and historical wargaming. I am your host, Riskini Jim, and today we are back to finish up our war game set in the Ukraine War, specifically the Battle of Makariv in March 2022. The system we're using is a modern day update of Avalon Hill's classic Panzer Leader, along with some rules from sister games like the Arab-Israeli Wars and Tactical Combat Middle East by Toshash Miniatures. So in part one of this video we went over all of the background and context for the Battle of Makarif. I won't belabor all of that again. There is a link to part one in the description of this video. Check it out if you're interested in that material. But, in summary, the initial Russian drive toward Kyiv came right out of the north, straight out of Belarus, frustrated at places like Hostomel, Busha, and Irpin. The Russians then tried to sidestep to the west. It looks like they tried to either flank Kyiv from the west to maybe strike against the city's left wing, or bypass the city completely in some sort of grand encircling maneuver. They really couldn't make up their minds. The Russians kind of tried to do both in this divided axis of assault, and as a result, neither assault really had any chance of success. The drive to bypass Kyiv had to go through the suburb of Makariv. The Russians needed Makariv because they needed access to the kyiv Zhitomir Highway. This is either the M06 or the E40 Highway, depending on whose map you're looking at. The 37th Separate Guards Motor Rifle Brigade got the order on February 27th to take the town, but were almost immediately counterattacked by the Ukrainian 14th Mechanized Brigade. Our war game is trying to recreate one of the counter-counter assaults back into the city, reflecting the kind of bitter seesaw fighting that we saw in Makariv, lasting halfway into March of 2022. We have great friends and longtime community members Damon and Rasmus playing in this game, with Damon commanding the Russians and Rasmus on defense with the Ukrainians. So far in our war game, we've seen plenty of things that are eerily similar to what we observe in the opening weeks of the Ukraine war. We have massive columns of densely packed Russian armor stretching down these narrow woodland roads. We have Ukrainian drones sniping Russian commanders with well-placed missile strikes. And we have massive Russian barrages of artillery and rod rocket batteries. And due to some very bad die rolls, we've had Ukrainian units hold out against massive Russian attacks that frankly should have done a lot more damage. But again, this is what we see in the history. The Ukrainians are badly outnumbered and definitely don't have the right tools for the job, but they are proving really resilient and very, very tough to eliminate. Meanwhile, the Russians aren't so much getting destroyed outright as they are getting slowed down, disorganized, and bottlenecked in place. But all that said, this game, almost by default, almost has to turn out at least a little bit better for the Russians than we saw historically. This is because the Russian player is not required to make all the same mistakes that the Russians made in real life. Let's face it, the Russians have given us a master class in how not to execute these kinds of operations. So all the Russian player has to do is not make these same mistakes within the constraints of doctrine, technology, and morale that have been built into the scenario. So at the moment, Damon's Russians are holding two of the game board's objective points. He only needs to be holding three at the end of turn eight in order to win the game. This battle is just getting started, folks. Let's head over to the footage and see how this one shakes out. Okay, everybody, we're beginning Ukrainian turn four, where things have definitely taken a left turn. Uh, once the Russians were able to finally empty out this hex, um, the armor that was in there, uh, two platoons of T-72s and a platoon of empty BMPs were then able to use this northern road to sort of outflank the javelin position. Notice the javelins can't shoot through these two building hexes and occupy this objective hex. There's backup motorized infantry behind it and they're also being flanked the other way through the woods down by the river. Uh, they kind of came around through this uh, series of hexes down here. However, the Russians failed to rally their headquarters unit, so they're still morale D. Almost nothing of theirs is rallying. The one thing that did rally was then resuppressed by uh, Ukrainian uh, mortars, which also finished off a uh, pinned down conscript platoon. And now we're going to continue with uh, Ukrainian direct fire. So, all right, Rasmus, uh, what are we shooting at first? Well, we uh, will start by uh, taking the tank and uh, shoot at the heavy weapon in the uh, of the price. 30 versus 11, because he gets to add 5 because of concrete buildings, which is a sloppy 2 to 1. No modifier to the die roll. Plus 1 for concrete buildings, minus 1 for being dispersed. You need a 1 through a 4 
on a D6 to finish him off with just the bank. Hey, yeah, hey, it's free. Cool, he smoked it. Boom! He's out of there. And everything else in that takes is firing at the uh, conscript. Light anti-tank section. That's a bunch of end laws firing at infantry. That's not really the job they were designed for, so they divide to nine. But this BMP has a 30 millimeter auto cannon that definitely counts as full. So that is going to be 17. So two to one on this guy in the open. That one. That's smoked. The helicopter that's not suppressed and there's still got. He's got one H class strike left. Uh, yeah. If we scoot over a bit so we can see the. Uh, this guy is hanging out on uh, my objective over there. Alright, we want to make sure we don't move a quarter, because his sand is still working over there. So we will move down on top of the tank. Alright, cool. Now you fire the... it's only worth 18. This is going to be his last ordnance package. He is now dry. But we have 18 versus 3. You want to just attack the headquarters unit, or are you going after anyone else in there? Just the headquarters. 6 to 1, he's dispersed. Plus, he's in woods, it doesn't matter. That is it, the Russian commander is smoked. How many generals did they lose in the first month? It's happening here on our table. And now, poor Mr. Damon is unfortunately stuck at Morale D for the rest of the game. We're now beginning uh, Russian turn uh, five. They've called in their new artillery. Now we resolve their last turn's artillery. This is both artillery units, the D-30s and the Grods, are both gonna land right here. That is a total of, what I say, 18 plus 28. 46 versus seven is six to one odds. He's dispersed and a double deal killing he is smoked. That is what we call a Damon proof attack. Uh, even Damon's dice can't screw that one up. <laughs> Airface takes place after artillery. Huh. So that flanker has used up his one anti-tank strike. He does have a bomb strike left. Yep. Bomb strike has a range of five. All that stuff that's just moved out of the um, football field is now... Yeah, these guys. Yep, that's all right next to a unit. So um, we'll give them the good news. Sweet. Speaking of good news, here comes a missile. I'm assuming uh, Mr. Rasmus from... Oh, yeah. Sweet. Time to roll them bones. One-to-one -one attack. Ah. <sighs> A one. A one. Shot him down. Have him blast. Boom. That smoked uh, Mr. Uh, fullback. He is down. Awesome. All right. Then we go to... Uh, I'm blaming the ghost of Key for that one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more honorable to be shot down by a fighter pilot than some grunt with a uh, <laughs> crappy old 1980s uh, man pads. All right. Cool. Uh, direct fire. Are the javelins in a vehicle? No, the vehicle is unloaded because it's at the bottom of the stack. So mechanized infantry right. is unloaded. So they're on foot. Yeah, everyone's on foot. They're trotting alongside the little column of PMPs. Right. -o. So some auto cannon would um, wouldn't be pleasant, would it? Uh, no, not at all. Or small arms fire. You can put a total of 16, 23 points. Uh huh. But he so is in a concrete see. building. Yep. That's your dilemma. I mean, yeah, mm. you either stay there and eat the javelin, or you run away and give him the hex. Yeah. I'll shoot and then scoot, I think. 23 versus 11. I'm assuming you're just going after the javelins? Yep. 2 to 1, add 1 to the die roll. 3. Comes a 4. Comes a 4 on 2 to 1. They are dispersed. Okay, we are now beginning Ukrainian turn 5. Looks like the Russians have occupied this bridge. They still hold the center of town. Damon is fortifying this position over here and fortifying this position over here as best he can. He's sitting on a tactical victory right now, but here come the Ukrainian uh, SA-24s. We're going to come in and release all their bombs. The, uh, it's an older aircraft, so I, I didn't give them any guided ordnance for this scenario, but uh, they do have three 40-point uh, bomb strikes. So, holy crap, here they come. Um, they have to be like five hexes away to release. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm assuming you're bombing uh, this tanks in this objective hex. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. Do have them spotted because you have a drone that is nearby. And all right, ping the laser off of them. All right, cool. Because uh, empty trucks can't spot. Here's yep. the target hex. Em empty trucks can't spot. So uh, we say that this drone, which is now empty on missiles, um, yeah, pinged a, uh, a laser off of them, and that's how the strikes come in. Awesome. Oh, it's three forty points, strikes. So yep. 120 points. Unfortunately, everything in there is armored, so it has to divide. That's going to be 60 points. 
and everything in there is in concrete buildings, so everything gets five points added to its defense. So we'll go through each one. 60 versus 11 is 5 to 1. Add 1 to the die roll. I have 3. Alright, cool. So that is a 3 becomes a 4. He is smoked. One wreck counter in there. Alright, now we have 60 versus 25, which is only a 2 to 1, and you have to add 1 to the die roll. But you get to roll twice. And um, now we are moving on to uh, Russian turn 6, where only the D30s this turn, because the grubs are reloading. So we have 13 points, landing on 7, because they are in concrete buildings. Uh, that, believe it or not, comes out to only a 1 to 1, and you have to add 1 to the die roll. So believe it or not, they're both Five and the six. No effect on that one, the second one. 2 becomes a 3. That one at least is dispersed. Yeah, once those grads reload, that's going to be a different story. All right, now we go to uh, Russian direct fire. Yep, so we will engage the javelin unit again with everything that we can. You're looking at 16 points. Eight points if you want to get cute. Eight more points, they can shoot off the bridge over these woods into the concrete block. Oh, yeah, because it's elevated. They're elevated, yeah. aren't they? Yep. Yep. So it's 24. Yep. Uh, they don't divide because they're A-star. 24, it's... F ooh, it's 11, though, because of the stupid concrete buildings. Uh, it's 2 to 1. You have to add 1 to the die roll. 6 becomes a 7. Oh, my god, with the rolling. Well, the tank can take a shot at the, uh, right, yeah, so at the um, infantry just above the drone. You have to add 3 yep. to the die roll, though. Improve position in buildings. Oh, yes. Right, I mean, it's worth it, but it's worth a shot, but it's going to be 16 <laughs> plus 3 is 19... It's three to one, but you have to add three to the die roll. You, you might pin them down. Five becomes an eight. Oh, hell no. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to actually Russian uh, rallies. Uh, we'll just work our way from left to right. Motorized infantry. One. Hey. Two and a, th two and a six. All right, cool. Awesome. And then uh, here we have uh, this motorized rifle. One. Hey, there you go. Oh, there is a truck I can rally on the western objective where the oh, HQ was that's true I forgot about him four no alright he's no longer spotted because the drone that was spotting him moved over here ok we're now into Ukrainian turn six we're coming down to the fourth quarter here folks alright so here comes the SG-24 again he's expended all his ordnance but he does still have a uh, 23 millimeter auto cannon on there so he has a six A star attack He's going to try and chain gun the infantry on the bridge. But before he gets a chance to do that, Mr. SA-13 is going to take his poke. So that's going to be 24 versus, I think it's 24, 1 to 1. Oh. A 4? He yep. is dispersed, barely. Alright, cool. So he's not shot down, but that attack does not happen uh, this turn. Okay, we then go on to Ukrainian direct fire, of which, oh crap, there's, there's a lot. Yeah. How do you want to do this? I mean, you've got a lot of targets. You know, you have a lot of choices, and and ta that the, the clock is ticking. Yeah, uh, target rich environment. Ooh, nice dilemma tactics, Damon. He shoots on the objective. He helps open up the objective, but in so doing, he may wind up taking fire in turn from those T-72s right on his flank. So let's see if that concrete building there. Yeah, both of them. The dispersed T-72s and the uh, good yeah. order ones. We'll put everything into the good order one. Alright, that is 120 points. Oi! Because these all do double at point blank range. So, two 60s become 120 versus 25. Yeah, it is 4 to 1 and 1 to the die roll. With a 1 modified to a 2, that is the end of that. Uh, two uh, T-80s or T-72s. Boom, they're smoked. All right, so then we'll go, on, we'll go on to rallies. You've got uh, this one truck section that can rally on a 1 through a 4. Perfect. Oh, fails to rally. Okay, so then we go on to movement. Yep, so the javelin stack, if they move down hill, can they cat attack? Can they yes. Attack from there? So move into that hex. Uh, yep. The mechanized infantry section can cat attack. Javelins can't cat attack, BMPs can't cat attack. But the mechanized infantry, yes, they can. Now it's 8 to 27, becomes 32. Oh, they, they can't, can't just do the cat attack, the infantry. Oh no, you have to attack the whole stack. Okay, okay yeah. 
Now, I'm just seeing if it's even legal. I think it's exactly legal. 8, 2, 27, concrete buildings, you have to add 5. 27 plus 5, check my math, is 32. 8 is exactly 1 to 4. It is technically legal. We'll do, do that then. All right, real quick, motorized rifles, do you want to take opportunity fire? Uh, yes, please. All right, uh, 7 to 7, it is 1 to 1 odds. Have to add 1 to the die roll. Four becomes a five. That one to one that has no effect. Um, all right, so now comes the cat attack. One to four, subtract one from the die roll. A two becomes uh, a one. Two becomes a one that disperses the infantry, and double D disperses, i.e., kills the dispersed tank. So there are your uh, Ukrainian badasses. Disperses the infantry and finishes off the tank unit with Molotov cocktails in the engine. He's also smoked. Back to send to the back. Damn, that's uh, like literally right out of the uh, right after the right out of the news reports right there. I'm glad we got that on camera. Close assault just took out Russian tanks in city combat. Crept up on them and chucked a couple uh, anti-tank grenades into the engine deck. Okay, uh, we're kind of doing the the sequence out of order. I don't know. Is there any other clo is there any other um, movement? Uh, yep. Technically, that that close assault should have been the end of the turn. But go ahead. Uh, as, as, long, as long as it doesn't affect this hex, you can do some more movement. Okay, beginning of Russian turn seven. He's now called in his very last artillery for the game. Meanwhile, his last big strike, the last whack with his grads, and he's got his D-30s after that. So 46 is landing on this hex here, versus 6 is 7 to 1, add 1 to the die roll, they're smoked no matter what. 46 versus 7 is 6 to 1, add 1 to the die roll. Uh, Damon, don't roll a 6. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Five. Oh, Close. almost. And uh, here's the one that's probably going to survive. 46 becomes 23. 3 to 1, add 1 to the die roll. That's a 4, becomes a 5. He is dispersed. Most of the is still king on the battlefield. You know, you watch, like, reports from the field. That's the one thing that's even now still kicking their ass, is uh, Russian artillery. And even the artillery that the Ukrainians have, it doesn't matter how many tubes you have, it's how many shells per day you can fire in certain sectors, and the Russians are outmatching Ukrainians like 10 to 1. Alright, so uh, we then go on to, there's no Russian air phase because you blew that fullback out of the sky. We go to direct fire. Um, so we have no working tank left. Oh, we've got one right down there, but that's... He can see the BMP. Yes. It's just been suppressed. So, just a super quick measure. They moved here. Yeah, they right in that, right in that chute. They just missed 1311, they just missed 1213. They they mm. didn't quite realize it, but they moved right into that T-72's gun sights. Roll the three. Alright, so he's smoked. Cool. Oh, the BTRs. Oh, we got BTRs, and if you want to empty anyone out of that uh, hex, uh, you've got uh, these guys right next to him. Yep, I'll empty that, we'll blow that truck away. Alright, he's in uh, concrete building, so it's it's tougher than you might think. Eight mm. plus eight that don't divide because they're A stars. 16 and of course 7. 16 and 7 is 23 versus 7. That is 3 to 1, add 1 to the die roll. 3 becomes a 4. And it's dispersed. You park trucks in like concrete underground parking garages, it's tough to... <laughs> it becomes tough mm. to hit them. Alright, up to here to your BTRs you were mentioning. They can't versus, do anything to the tanks, can they? Uh, they 16 on... 20, they can disperse one. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for the shot. Alright, 16, uh, oh no, they're A's. They're technically they double. So it's 32 versus 20, 1 to 1. It's an A-class weapon, so that star does not take into account for reactive armor. It does not kill him, but it does disperse him. If it wasn't for the buildings, it would have killed him. Heavy nope. weapon section, 1, 2, 3, 4, can technically see that BMP. Uh, oh yeah, might as well if it's... 10 to 6, 1 to 1, add 1 to the die roll. 3 becomes a 4. First. Oh. <laughs> okay, we are now halfway through the second to last turn of the game. 
with the SU-24 Fencer, again with its 23mm auto cannon. Um, subject to missile fire from Mr. Damon. Five becomes a six, is it? Or just no, five? it's just a five, but that it's is, five, uh, yes. it's only one-to-one, one, which means the missile misses. He never has to break off his attack. The attack goes in. It's a six A star because it's an auto cannon, which means it does not have to divide. So we are talking about six versus 12, one to two odds, no modifier. A double D will kill him. Uh, four. Uh, four stays at a four, no additional effect. Then we go on to uh, Ukrainian direct fire. Yeah, we have got a uh, tank that will put, put uh, his shot into the uh, objective. Okay, again, for our audience, that's supposed to say A star. Again, uh, my apologies for the typo. What that means in game terms is dual class ammunition. He does not have to divide. But, um, yeah, he's going to go ahead and put 30 points into 12. Again, he has to add 5 because of concrete buildings. That is going to be 2 to 1. A 2. 2. He is smoked. Ooh, and that is that objective X fall because now Rasmus can use his split movement fire or even regular movement, uh, to be honest, uh, to move somebody into that hex. All right, cool. So we then go to uh, Ukrainian movement. The uh, heavy weight mob in the top will uh, move uh, one down, uh, one over. So one, two, like that? Uh, yep. Now, that does technically trigger opportunity fire. You're going to do a cat attack, right? Are these two guys going to join in? Uh, yeah, but so. Okay, uh, cool. One of these and uh, the uh, heavy weapon section two up. Ooh, we'll that I didn't see. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of close assault coming in. All right, Damon, you do get a pretty healthy opportunity fire phase here. Two sections of BTR-80s, both with automatic 30mm auto cannons. Uh -huh. So it's up to you uh, who you engage. The volunteers have the weakest defense. But I come through concrete buildings. You are in concrete buildings, yeah. We'll try and take out the volunteers then. All right, the volunteers are also in concrete buildings. So if you're gonna go oh, out right, for that, the, forget that then. Uh, we'll go yeah. for the heavy weapons. All right, that's gonna take be take out one uh, unit. Uh, Sixteen to six. That's three to one. Add one to the die roll. Six becomes a seven. Oh hell no! That ain't taking that shit. All right, now the close assault goes in. Okay, you know what? I, I'm actually kind of glad that happened. No offense, Damon. If I oh, yeah. put up... An, I mean, N-Laws have to kill something, or the British members of our community are never going to let me hear the end of it. The Javelins get all the talk. You'd be surprised how many people get upset about that. Everyone's talking about the Javelins. No one talks about N-Laws. So, cool. 18, 6, and 6 is 30. 38 versus 12 is 3 to 1. Three to one. Subtract 1 from the die roll. That's it. Oh man. Uh, Alright, so six minus one on three to one, they're both the scores. I'll take that. The way Damon's rolling rallies, then again, he's lost his commander. He's probably not going to rally them next turn. So you'll get one more crack out of him in turn eight. Alright, and then uh, to finish up movement, are we moving those T64s into the objective hex? Nope. No? Okay. No, but I would think of uh, moving uh, the command section in that set. Okay. Only, only one unit can sit in there because there's two wrecks in there. So we'll move the command section in there and the uh, T-72 will uh, move right around the objective and uh, just beneath uh, those two BTRs, like so. Alright, here we are in the very last turn of the game. Uh, Russian artillery has landed on an empty hex. There's been some other shooting. We've pinned down some Ukrainian units. Okay, so, I'm sorry, what did you say? These BTRs are going to shoot which way? Yep, uh, due north. Killer truck. All right, he's in concrete building, so you probably aren't going to kill him. Fact, All right, what about the other truck? Is he, in con is he in concrete buildings as well? Yeah, but now you've got help units mm. that can help you. Yeah, uh, they'll all shoot at him then, yeah. All right, cool. So 8, which doesn't divide. 7, which doesn't divide. 32, which does divide. So we have 8 plus 16. That's 24. 31, 39 versus 7. 5 to 1, add 1 to the die roll. 8 to 1. Three becomes four. Yes. I think that's everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, we then go to Russian rallies. Good luck with no commander. All right, so you need a one or a two here. One. Hey, one of them rallies. Is the other one here? Three. Does not. All right, does that rally BTR want to make a run for it, or is he going to die for the motherland? 
but he they will might make a run go ahead. to the infantry to the west. All right, so by not using a quarter of his movement in your line of sight, he does. He gives up the position, but he does escape. Oh, technically that Russian tank can still see him within four hexes. Yeah, remember, you can always spot an enemy unit within four hexes, even if there's no uh, intervening terrain. So he can shoot right across this little town park kind of thing, this vacant lot, and hit him, unless he keeps moving. He's got eight left. I'm rushing. I'm not going to stop and pick the infantry up. I'm going to keep going west. Oh, yeah, okay. Right, so now We've seen the videos, they've driven straight past their own infantry, and they've let their own infantry fall off the back of the vehicle and kept driving, so... Oh, I, yeah, I was, I was watching some of that yesterday, doing mm -hmm. some research, yeah. Yeah, I can do a shoot and scoot, yes. Uh, the, with some of your units, yeah. Yeah, the two armoured vehicles will push north. They're just, like, machine gunning their way into the town. Like, the tanks should the put infantry, in Yeah, the infantry will stay on the, uh, will stay on the bridge. Moving on to the last, the bottom of the eighth, the last uh, phase here. No Ukrainian artillery, but we do have one last Ukrainian uh, airstrike if you want to try and machine gun somebody. Uh, we'll uh, attack the infantry across the park. Okay, with the airstrike. All right, uh, go ahead and roll for the uh, SA-13, uh, David. Three. Three does chase off uh, him for the last turn. So that's the air phase. We now go to direct fire. God. Well, uh, might as well shoot at the uh, motorized rifle. Okay, I it think is. The it stays. Cat attack can take off the other one. I'm pretty sure it will too. So 30. Also, we will, again we want to have the end loss blow up something, or uh, we'll never hear the end of it from our British community members. Okay, so here comes. Uh, it's a, again a star, so it stays at 30. It should say a star there on the counter. 30 versus seven. Four to one. Add one to the die roll. Okay. That smokes it. Ooh. So let's go ahead and get to rallies. Let's see if we can rally this truck. The truck on a one. There you go. He rallies. The uh, T-72. Okay, cool. T-64. Go ahead. That ball. He does rally. All right. And now the cat attack to finish the game. It looks like 38. Uh, yep. 30, yeah, because this is uh, 30 plus 8. He's 38 plus heavy weapons. Oh, my God. Automatic grenade launchers are going in there. End laws. All kinds of uh, grenade launchers, rifle fire, sticky bombs, the kitchen sink. All right, so it is six to one. Um, subtract three from the die roll. Make that subtract two from the die roll, and a double D will do it, just for fun. Uh, I hear clicking of dice. You, you don't need dice, but just for fun, let's calculate what you would actually need. We said, we said six to one, right? Uh, yep. Six to one, subtracting two from the die roll. You would have to roll an 11 on a single d6 to whiff this. Yeah, basically they just bail out of it and sort of run away. Because uh, he is hella smart. And cat attacks always close out the game. That is the bottom of the 8th. And there is our final result. Looks like a Russian marginal victory. Which is not too unlike uh, a okay. lot of the historical results. The historical results, they traded this town multiple times to the point where the town practically didn't exist, uh, at least by the end of March of 2022. The Ukrainians ended up owning the rubble pile uh, when the Russians pulled out of this general area. Um, when the Russians wound up pulling out of, this, out of the whole Kiev sector pretty much. But they were trading this town, those same two brigades, 37th Guards, uh, motor rifle and 14th mechanized. They were they were trading that town back and forth. Good game. I, I made a couple of mistakes in the start, deployment wise I think. But the yeah, I think those javelins were... Yeah, because he was able to just outflank them to the north. Uh, yeah. Uh, sitting uh, there in, the, in that soccer field. And uh, I should have a uh, pack three empty trucks on the bridge. That would have been tough. Mm. That does, that those are, that would be annoying. That's literally uh, yeah. just, you know, that's like, that's the kind of stuff that you saw. So even in Kiev, they just set up these emergency roadblocks of, you know, old old streetcars, buses. Uh, of course, in Busha, we see uh, cement trucks, uh, garbage trucks, and um, what else was there? Uh, like those Caterpillar earth movers, like construction equipment. Drive that shit out into the street. It does slow the enemy down. Uh, Damon, how about you? No, it was good. I mean, I tried to be as Russian as I could. Well, you definitely got the take casualties part right. Yeah. 
and the, and the line up on the road bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 combat units, including uh, some pretty priceless SU-34 uh, fullbacks. Um, that did happen. SU-34s, uh, at least one SU-34 did go down. Uh, they also lost a MI-8, and they also lost, a, uh, later on, a, a 25 a Frogfoot. Meanwhile, both of the uh, yeah the Ukrainians didn't lose any tanks, not one. They only started with two. They ended up with two. And they, it's not like they weren't in combat. Oh no, they were in the thick of it, especially in the second half of the game, for sure. And yeah, Russian artillery. Uh, we've talked about it before. Russian artillery is even now, even in 2024. The grad, the grad makes the difference. The grad is yeah. They uh, they do not like the grads over there. Trust me. And both sides use it. All right, guys, so that is going to wrap us up for today. Uh, any last comments from our two opponents? Uh, well played. Congrats. Cheers, mate. And you, uh, and you, Rasmus. Yeah, it was a good game. I enjoyed it. And there we have it, folks. At one point, Damon had this game won as a Russian tactical victory, but Rasmus was able to mount a pretty ferocious counterattack in the center of town and fight Damon back down to a marginal. We had some pretty wild dice on the table, with the SU-34 fullback being blown clean out of the sky and a drone strike blowing a Russian brigade commander clean off the table. But some badly deployed javelins allowed Damon to outflank that soccer field from two directions, no less, and thereby take that bridge and cut off the town of Makariv. At the same time, the Russians had lost their battlefield commander. Thus reduced to a morale D, they were steadily crumbling under disorganization, bad training, and broken command and control. Conversely, while the Ukrainians do have lots of high-tech toys, as we saw in today's game, they very, very quickly run out of ammunition for these wonder weapons. It's not how many high-tech weapons the Ukrainians may or may not have, it's how much ammunition they have to keep those weapons operational in the field. And when it comes to ammunition levels, this is a field in which the Russians sometimes enjoy an advantage up to 10 to 1. These are the kind of factors we tried to bake in today's scenario, and I hope you guys found some value in today's look at the Battle of Makariv, Early Ukraine War, March 2022. And that's where we're going to leave it for today, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Please remember to hit that notification bell. Also, please consider joining the SitRep Podcast Discord. There is an auto-accept invitation link to our Discord in the description of this video. Join our community, see what everybody's up to, and best of all, show us what's happening on your hobby table. But for now, this is Ariskin and Jim with the SitRep Podcast. We are rounds complete for another episode. And as always... Tango, Mike for watching.